problem number one. What's the surface area of the piece of pizza? This is just my fancy way of trying to make it fun, but you're really just trying to find the area of a sector. Good. A piece of pizza is really just a sector. Yep. So pretend for this problem that you're in a circle and you have this sector that you're trying to find the area of. This is a formula you do need to memorize. So go ahead and do this one. So yeah, I was really mean to you on this very first problem. When you cross multiply, you get 176 over 45 pi. Sorry about that. Now you know if um, we're on the part where it's multiple choice, a lot of times those answers are real world answers, aka they press the pi button, they actually multiply them out. So if we did write this one as an approximate decimal, then the area of this slice of pizza would be 12.29, don't put pi because I pressed pi, inches squared. So that would be the approximate decimal and the fraction would be the exact answer. Showing work on this, you would do a sec over area, the area of that circle is 64 pi, equals m over 360, and you cross multiply. All right, let's try this one. Go. All right, there's a few ways to look at this problem. Some people looked at this and they remembered our theorem. When a radius meets a tangent line, you get a right angle. So they put a right angle here, and then to find x, they use this triangle right here. Add up the angles, 35 and 90, and subtract them from, from 180, or just subtract 35 from 90. That's one way to get x. The other way to get x, we would need to find y first. We know that y is an arc that is intercepted by an inscribed angle. This angle, 35 degrees, that is an inscribed angle. Inscribed angles do not equal their arcs. They are half of their arcs. So 35 is half of this arc. So if we double 35, we know that the measure of that arc is 90. Let me just show you the other way you could have gotten x had you forgotten that when a radius means tangent line, get a right angle. <coughs> Where is the vertex for circle x? It is outside the circle. We know to find an angle that is outside the circle, we subtract the arcs and divide by 2. Well, one of his arcs is 180 because it's a semicircle. The other arc is 70 and divide by 2. That's just another way to get angle x had you forgotten that theorem. Next problem. Find x and y, please. All right. Very good, guys. Let's find x first. Guys, it's all about where the vertex is. It might be on the center, it might be on the circle, it might be inside the circle, or it might be outside. This one is <clears throat> inside the circle. We know when an angle is inside the circle, we add its arcs and divide by two. What do I mean when I say its arcs? I mean the arcs that that angle is intersecting the arcs that it is opening up to. If that were a flashlight and you were shining it, it'd be the angle it was shining on. Shining on, shining on. Okay, anyways, I think I drove that point in. So it would be 140 divided by two. So X is 70. To find Y, we'll erase some of this craziness. Y is, we need to know our vocab. You have to memorize that. Y is an inscribed angle. Inscribed angles are half of their intercepted arc. They are one half of their intercepted arc. Now Y's intercepted arc is, well we had to find the missing ones. When I erase my work, I erase this dot, sorry. That is the diameter. So in my mind, I'm looking at this one's 180, and this one is 20. So that entire arc is 200. So y is half of its arc. y is 100. So it's all about knowing what angle you're dealing with, what angle you're dealing with, and then you know what rule to use. 
Okay, um, there's multiple ways to do this problem. What I'm not going to do is extend OP and make it hit the circle. I know I could extend it, and that would actually be a diameter, and so that would create um, a semicircle, but I'm going to show you a different way to do this. One of the theorems we learned is that if a radius is perpendicular to a chord, it cuts the chord in half and the arc in half. Well, we don't know that these are perpendicular, but we know that arc was cut in half because 44 equals 44. So we're using the converse of that theorem. If I cut the arc in half, well, then I have to be perpendicular. You don't cut an arc in half if you, inter if you intersect the chord diagonally. That's not going to cut the arc in half. If you intersect it right at 90 degrees, you cut the chord and the arc in half. So I'm using that knowledge to know that this is a 90 degree angle. This is a central angle. Central angles equal their arcs. So now I have a right triangle. This is 90. This is 44. And then you just find this missing angle. So I use right triangles. Could you have extended that, found the arc, and divided by 2? Absolutely. Either way, you get 46. X is 46 degrees. That's what I love about circles. There's so many ways to find the right answer because that's how circles work. They're so symmetrical and beautiful. We, let me, let me say this really quick because I have a review video on my website that reviews some theorems. Well, there's going to be some theorems in there that we never learned because we had to cut some things out due to the flood. This, you do not need to worry about. This. So if you hear me saying these theorems in that review video, then you may ignore them. We did not learn any of this. All right, let's practice some more angles. <laughs> pretty quick, pretty easy. Subtract the arcs and divide by 2. Why do we subtract? It's all about where the vertex is. The vertex is outside my circle, so I subtract the arcs and divide by 2. Here's another one. So it is easy to oversimplify things. It's easy to be like, oh, subtract the arcs and divide by 2. But you can't just subtract any old arcs you feel like. You have to subtract the arcs that the angle is intersecting. You have to subtract the arcs that the angle is intersecting. So first I'm going to find my missing arc. It's 50, and then I will subtract that angle's arcs and divide by 2. Careful. Okay. One more where the angle's outside. <laughs> nice. Very good. So you add up the arcs that you have, and you find the missing arc, which is... 20. You add them up, you subtract from 360. And then you subtract that angle's intercepted arcs and divide by 2. 60 divided by 2, the answer was 30. What else do we have in store? I'm going to skip that one. I'm going to skip that one. Let's do this one. We need a little bit more practice with arc length and a sec, so try this one. Now, a lot of you did this on the pop quiz, too. What is x? Be careful. x is a radius. x will never have pi. Our radii are a segment, and so, I mean, they could have pi, but that's pretty rare. They need to be a straight segment. They should not have pi. Usually the curves have pi, and the segments do not. So, if we did L over C equals M over 360, it would start out like that. When you cross multiply, you get C equals 40 pi. And the way to undo circumference is to divide by 2 pi. The pi is canceled and the radius is 20. Oh, I had that problem twice on here. We're going to skip that one. Let's skip that one. Let's do this one. The diameter of, pretend that said circle E, is 34, and DC is 30. Find EF. 
just going to work this together because we're running out of time. The diameter is 34. So that would mean what? 17, 17. DC is 30. Now, when a radius is perpendicular to a chord, it bisects the chord. Find EF. What are we going to do here? Pythagorean theorem. Yes, very good. It's a Pythagorean triple. So we had to take the diameter and we had to cut it in half. And we had to take the chord and cut it in half because of the theorems we learned about chords. Try this one. So I can explain it. All right. Let's start with the only number on the whole picture, 19. 19 happens to be an inscribed angle. So we know that it is half of its intercepted arc. So we're going to double 19. We now know that this arc is 38. Well, hey, we didn't need to do that. Because when two angles intercept the same arc, they are congruent angles. So we actually knew this one was 19. We never even had to find the 38. Now, question. Is this a radius? Check, that's a radius. Is this a tangent line? Check, that's a tangent line. When a radius meets a tangent line, you get a right angle. When a radius meets tangent line, you get a right angle. So one way to do this is just to find the complement of 19. So x is 71. Now, could you have found, if you didn't know that, could you have found the arc? Yes, you could have. 180 minus 38 means that this arc is 142. And then you could have halved it to find the angle that opens up to it because that vertex is on the circle. Sound good? Let's do an A sec one. Let's find the area of the shaded region, the area of the sector. You are going to memorize this. Let's do it. What do we get? 72 pi, that pi is pretty essential. No pi, no credit. So, A sec over, whoa, what was the area? What is 18 squared? 324 pi? Pi r squared equals m over 360. Doing good. Cross multiply, you get 72 pi. All right, this is going to be our last one for the day. I will give you some time to think about this. Ooh, nice. Okay, this one's kind of a cool looking one. Um, you're really just finding the area of the sector twice. The radius of this one is 11, and this distance is 17. So there we go. Now we know that the radius of circle B is 6. So now we're just finding the area of the sector, and we're doing it twice. So the formula is a sec over a equals m over 360. But, I mean, if you want to look at this, whereas you're looking at, that's a 90 degree angle, that's just a fourth of a circle. So you're really just finding the area of the circle and you're dividing by four. That's what you're doing when you cross multiply because 90 over 360 is really just one fourth. So you can look at it that way as well if you saw it that way. But you're really just finding the area twice and either using the proportion or dividing by 4. You will get 39.25 pi or, or 157 fourths pi. You just cross multiply and then you add them together. Yep. Here are the things that must be memorized for the test. And you do not need to memorize the equation of a circle formula. You do not need to memorize anything on your formula chart, so like area, circumference, that kind of thing. So these would be the formulas that you need to memorize. Now, the concepts that you need to memorize are a little bit more numerous. The concepts that you need to memorize are our good old angles, central angle equals the arc. 
inscribed angle, half of the arc. Your angle falls somewhere inside the circle. You add the arcs and divide by two. And then of course when your angle falls, no matter how it falls, if the vertex is outside the circle, you subtract the arcs and divide by two. So those aren't really formulas, they're more of like concepts. Central, inscribed, inside, outside. Inside add, outside subtract. Okay, a couple more concepts, let's think about this, that we needed to know. Those, those chords and, and um, chord and tangent concepts. Here's a chord concept. If a radius is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord and it bisects the arc. So that was an important one. Um, here's another one. Congruent chords intercept congruent arcs. Pretend that's prettier. So if those chords are congruent and you're looking for the measure of this missing arc, it is 57, even if there's a lot more things in your picture. This might not be the only thing that's going on. This might be going on, and this might be going on, and this might be going on. But congruent chords, if you can find two chords that match, then the arcs that surround them are congruent. So this would be 57. Um, you know, some tangent theorems that were important was that ice cream cone theorem. You have an ice cream cone. If two tangents come from the same point, those tangent segments are the same length. And then we've used this one multiple times. When a radius meets a tangent line, you get a right angle. It does not go there. Oh, I'm having a fire drill. Bye.